So my name is Chris Jones from feedingcities.info and we were invited to take part in the Agritecture First Cohort, which was uh, a great honor. And we were given the task of exploring the topic of the Future City Food Hub, which I took on with uh, Brian McCarthy from Cork Rooftop Farm in Ireland. And our interpretation of the challenge Future City Food Hub really had the emphasis on hub. Uh, currently, the Cork Rooftop Farm comprises two key elements, one being the urban farm, which was kind of a bit of urban guerrilla gardening that emerged at the start of the pandemic last year, and this year's recent addition, which is a um, CSA market garden farm about 35 kilometres out of town. And we really you know, took on the idea that it's a, the Future City Food Hub is an absolute hub, it's a spider in the web, of a food system belonging to a region or a city. And so the, C the CEA element is really just a part of supplying the ingredients to a huge food system and a way of making sure that all food has value and that no food waste takes place within a food system of a city. Currently, they occupy a site on a rooftop. You can see here this uh, satellite photo from about a year and a half ago. Uh, a typical situation, a flat roof, nothing happening on top of it. Here, a busy pedestrian market shopping street. And over here, an arcing crescent with a lot of food, restaurant cafes, food and beverage shops, outlets. And yeah, throughout the city, lots of empty, and I think Henry coined the term lazy spaces, places in the city which just aren't working so hard. Brian took one of these and flipped his business model at the start of the pandemic to create a urban farm. Here you see it in the early days where he created uh, raised beds for growing plants in um, yeah, converted pallets. In the middle, a uh, polytunnel greenhouse. Since then, he's added in the chicken coop and potting greenhouses, all kinds of elements crammed onto this pretty compact urban location. And you can just see in the top left here the pedestrian striped uh, streets where there is a market. And underneath this rooftop, which is on the first floor, he has warehousing and in the future plans to expand it into a cafe and other elements that will make it more of a hub. Again, you see the, the, the real pop-up approach that the farm took at the beginning and it gained a lot of momentum and he's got plans going forwards for how to give that even more program in the city centre, adding in shops, retail, cafes at the bottom and connecting it, pushing it through onto the pedestrian street where he currently sells his products at the market and the farmer's market direct sales uh, system. These are shots from his production of leafies and micros in the polytunnel on the site in the city center, which is doing really well. He found a niche in the market and uh, it's quite small scale and there's a lot of learning going on. He's, you know, it's a young entrepreneur, but it's, it's really doing well and it captures the spirit and the local pride in the area. And I think that's really important in the business model. Some shots of it at night, which also you know, adds a lot of value and energy to a city centre space, which was previously just a, a grey flat roof. And it gives you know, these little unique pocket spaces in a city that are so important. See here some plans where it will push out onto the pedestrian street at one side, break through a ground floor retail unit and emerge on the main pedestrian street at the front. So the, the plans going forward are to make it a real hub and a real connection, bringing food and people together in the city centre. Out to the market garden. This is a very recent no dig initiative. Uh, this was taken at the start of the project and already delivering a lot of produce as part of a subscription based uh, grocery service. If we zoom out a little bit, you see the whole city centre. Uh, dominated by lots of empty spaces, lots of hard spaces and plenty of opportunity for us to explore the idea of a hub which will connect the peri-urban, the rural and the real urban centre uh, through a valuable uh, food network. This was our schematic section where we thought, well, you know, there's, there's a lot of oversized, underused car parks in and around the city centre. So looking forwards ahead as it want to scale up and scale out, these could be really interesting buildings for us to consider alongside uh, you know, big local food players and the local council. So for this um, cohort, we took the idea of exploring a rooftop greenhouse and on the top floor of the car park, introducing CEA microgreens and leafies uh, production, and then proposed other additions that would add value to that whole food system, including local food restaurant, kitchen uh, labs, zero waste grocers. So that it really, really becomes a hub. 
where food is processed, where it's managed, where it's stored, where waste streams are converted or potential waste streams are converted into higher value food. For example, taking perishable tomatoes that might otherwise end up in landfill, adding it to some of your locally grown herbs and creating a long life pasta sauce that's a real local product. And then you're tackling you know, local food production and local food waste avoidance strategies in one. As you can see here, it's really a hub. There's inputs, there's outputs. We're trying to find the local synergies to really make a strong business case. It's not just about producing one item of food or a small, small number of um, items of food. It's about um, embedding the hub really within the food ecosystem of the city. Just to give an idea of the scale, we were looking at a 350 square meter greenhouse on the top and then a first phase indoor VF of 400 square meters broken down into 200 squares for micros and 200 for leafies. Scalable because it's a car park, we would need to have movable walls so that we could close it off and then replace those movable walls if we wanted to expand and scale up. If you look to the rooftop, what do we got in here? Production greenhouse, some leisure facilities, some open air systems, some rooftop uh, tower farms to try and get quite a lot of diversity in there and also to create an appealing um, amenity environment. Because remember, it, it also complements the market garden and the other location that we have in the city centre as well. Going down a level, this is the top floor car parking. So again, the rooftop car parking is often a place where people don't want to park because it's too hot or too wet. Um, so it's often very underutilised. Similarly for the, the the next level down. So we thought here's a good, a good spot where we can roll out some of the indoor vertical farming and try it out. And here you can see we, we ran three models, one looking at the micros, one looking at the leafies and the indoor controlled environment agriculture system and a rooftop greenhouse. Um, now he's got a pretty good market position. He's got a good strong reputation locally, he's selling directly to consumers at a farmer's market. So he's getting very good prices on his micros and leafies being one of the few producers and suppliers locally. So he's commanding very good prices for those. And you see that reflected in the payback time, which is pretty low, but we also based that on a pretty reasonable rent uh, based on the understanding that the momentum that he's gained from this current operation and the enthusiasm that that's generated by the local government can be pushed forwards into a more favorable tenancy agreement. In terms of jobs, you'd be looking between three and nine across those three types of production but really it comes down to the hub you see it here for example the greenhouse is got a very long payback time compared to the short payback time for the micros but we're looking at a total package and this doesn't take into account all of the different elements of the hub as yet but the designer tool has given us a really really good feasibility um, exercise that you know shows where's the quick wins and where you're going to have to be a little bit patient or what kind of crops do we need to be growing in the greenhouse to complement the other stuff that we're growing and make sure that the product is achieving a higher value than just a raw ingredient price. Um, it's an overview of what the rooftop could look like. Again, we've got the production greenhouse. Perhaps we would add a cafe or perhaps we would keep that also as production greenhouse. Plenty of space for some outdoor activities where you can also generate income. There's some pretty efficient uh, wicking bed, open air soil based systems that we'd like to explore just to get a bit more diversity in the types of crops that we could produce in the city centre. And also the towers, which again, they bring a vertical green element and he's had quite a lot of success with those already. So we wanted to make it a really visually appealing rooftop showcase that ties together the other elements that we've got going on. And that's a quick fly through from what we've achieved so far, and I would say if we go back to the spreadsheet, this has been a real um, super tool for me. Um, you know, for the last few years, I've been doing this kind of project, but trying to dig through the data, that just takes up so much time. And we've been able to whiz through that quite quickly with the AgTech uh, designer tool. And um, as more elements come online, that's really going to reinforce the financial feasibility of these strategies, which is so important because what we're doing here is quite unusual. There's a few people doing it around the world and there's some good examples, but we need to be backed up by that financial picture as well, which is what uh, agriculture designers allowed us to do so that we can transform these sort of dreams into, into a reality. 